Tom Syracuse. I'm running for the 6th Council District in Manhattan. That takes in most of the west side of uh, Manhattan. And tell me a little bit about your background. Well, uh, I, was, I was born and spent most of my life on the west side. And um, I've, um, I uh, went to the, I lived a while in, in Connecticut. I went to the University of Connecticut there. Then after that, I went into the Peace Corps and uh, came back and uh, um, went to Columbia University. Uh, that was in the uh, 1960s, and ever since then, I've been uh, living on the west side of Manhattan. Uh, I'm um, chair of the uh, New York County or Manhattan Green Party, and I've run for office on, uh, this is the third time, first the uh, assembly, then the state senate, and now for the city council. And what motivated you to run for office? Is this your first time running for office? No, no, I, I ran, well, this is the first time I've run uh, for the city council, but I, I also ran for the uh, state assembly and state uh, senate. Well, what motivates me is that I strongly believe that the voting public needs a progressive, a real progressive alternative uh, to, the, uh, to the two parties that have monopolized the uh, political um, uh, process. Uh, I mean, we invited, we invited all of the the mass media, from uh, uh, the TV stations, newspapers. Not one of them has shown up, and uh, that's the problem with independent parties like the Green Party, uh, that the mass media refuses to uh, cover us. Uh, take New York One TV. For the last few months, they have been covering 24-7 practically the two candidates, de Blasio and Lota. And once they gave our mayoral candidate, together with, uh, th I think, three other independents, about five minutes apiece on one program. They'll probably never be invited back. While they do incredible coverage, the uh, family backgrounds, uh, everything else on de Blasio and, uh, and Loda. And uh, that's just an example of how difficult, because a lot of people say, well, the Green Party, what's that? They don't know about the Green Party. Uh, well, how can the Green Party promote itself if the uh, mass media refuses to uh, give us the, a minimal amount of, of coverage. How about all the new like platforms out now, like social media and the internet? Well, uh, we're on the internet. It would, uh, that would mean, and I highly uh, urge people to do this, people who are really uh, sick and tired of the Republicans and Democrats, they should go onto the internet and key in uh, Green Party. Green Party in New York City, Green Party in New York State, Green Party and find out, uh, but a lot of people don't even know that we exist. Uh, and uh, it's certainly not for lack of trying that we, tr that's why, we, that's one of the reasons that we're, that we're participating in electoral politics. At least they'll see our name in the ballot. Of course, you've already interviewed other people who have exposed how unfair this ballot is, the way it's set up. It's uh, very clear, clearly set up for the Democrats and Republicans, but uh, third parties, their columns are compromised by mixing in other people from other parties in their columns. And so it's very easy to make a mistake if you want to vote for a third party, and that, of course, invalidates the uh, ballot. Um, and if elected, what would you change first? Well, living on the west side, uh, and being uh, well, brought up there and spending my, most of my life there, uh, we have uh, a terrible affordable housing crisis, which is, of course, uh, this is true throughout the city. Um, new people coming into the city, working and middle class people, there just isn't any real uh, affordable housing for them. 
and uh, this is especially true in Manhattan, and this is even more true on the west side of Manhattan. Uh, you have to you have to make a lot of money to be able to afford the market rate rents that uh, that exist in my neighborhood. The only reason that I can live in that neighborhood, and I'm a retired uh, public school teacher, by the way, I. I taught up in Washington Heights at George Washington High School for almost 30 years, and I do have a, a teacher's pension and I have Social Security, but I wouldn't be able to afford to live where I'm living. The only reason I can afford that is because 42 years ago, I uh, moved into a rent-controlled apartment. If I should lose that, I w I'd have to uh, certainly move out of Manhattan. I don't know where I would go. Uh, so that's a huge issue. and. Um, my uh, my opponents, um, especially the de the Democrat and the Working Families, uh, Mark Landis, Working Families, who's a Democrat, and Helen Rosenthal, she's on the Democratic line. They uh, they're always talking about the need for affordable housing, the the need to protect the small business, uh, the problem of gentrification. But it's all, it's just generalizations. They have no specific programs to uh, protect what's left of the uh, working and middle class in their district to help them stay there or to help mom and pop uh, businesses stay there. For, uh, to give you an example, inclusionary housing. Both of them support inclusionary zoning. You know, nobody knows what that is, but it means that <coughs> If a uh, big developer wants to put up yet another uh, high-rise luxury building on the west side, and we're inundated with them as it is, uh, they, can, they can actually get uh, public subsidies and tax breaks from the city if they agree to um, uh, reserve a small percentage of, those, of the new units for affordable, uh, as affordable units. And if they agree to that, they can actually build, they can have the zoning regulations put aside and build even higher monstrous buildings that uh, we are already uh, subjected to, which has a horrible effect on our environment. Well, people say, well, at least we'll get some more affordable units. Well, that's not true either, because these so-called affordable units are really not affordable. Um, they're based upon the average median income, 80% of the average median income in that particular district. Do you know what the uh, average median income is on the Upper West Side? Over $100,000 a year. So that means uh, people making up to $80,000 a year would be eligible for these so-called affordable units. And how much would those affordable units go for? Probably two, dollars $3,000 a month which is cheaper than, um, <clears throat> than the market rate. But on the other hand, can, uh, can you afford two or $3,000 a month for an apartment? I can't, and I'm a retired uh, teacher. So um, most of those affordable units are not really affordable. There may be a few small studios located on the back of the building down near the basement uh, for low-income people, but very few. So that's a sham, and um, and yet uh, the Democrat and Working Families uh, candidate, they uh, they support it. Um, an another thing they say they support is to protect mom and pop businesses, which are going out of business like wildfire in Manhattan and particularly in my district. But they have no program to support these. Why are these businesses going out of? Uh, uh, why do they uh, they can't make it? Because gentrification of the area is is increasing the whole uh, rent uh, levels uh, in, in commercial rents, and when their leases are up, they can't afford the new rent. So I'm the only one that advocates. Uh, a form of rent control to protect mom and pop businesses. They aren't. So that's, uh, that's one of the reasons, one of the many reasons that I'm running as a Green, because the Green Party will not accept any contributions 
from big business, from corporations, from uh, the uh, big real estate interests, and we're not beholden to them. So we, ha we, can, uh, we can push programs that will benefit uh, ordinary people, while the Democrats, they do accept money from these interests, and they may say so uh, one thing, like de Blasio sounds very progressive, but once they get into office, they will do something else. This has been the pattern, and that's one of the reasons why the electorate uh, has become very cynical and doesn't even want to vote anymore. Uh, the majority of people eligible to vote don't vote. I strongly urge them not, uh, even though I sympathize with their cynicism because our political system is a sham, that they should vote. They should vote for a party like the Green Party, uh, which stands for their interests and is not beholden to uh, big money interests.